I'm trying to help you out. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. So, and we're live, right? We're live. <laughs> do, do you, were you gonna show us pictures? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm trying to, I, I know that there, everybody's watching this, so we, we need to <laughs> make sure that, that we uh, um, get the, the sound going. All right, so check your mic again to unplug it and plug it back in. Yeah, I can't, I can't hear you. So um, it could be, sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, my gosh, just trying to help him. Trying to help him um, get this going. So, all right. Okay. Um, 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 um. Let's see. We need to go to. Now can you hear me? Yes. Okay, we're rocking now. All right, so I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll see you in a minute. Okay. Bye. Hello. Can everybody hear me now? I think so. Anyway, so there you go. Yay, yay indeed. So, back to my big, big blue rock who aided me magnificently there. Um, everything's weird. Oh, I've got to get rid of that now. There we go. That's got rid of that. So, hello again. Everything's working. It's like magic, which we'll get on to later. So, um, what am I doing? Now everything's all of a kerfuffle in my head. Um, I can't even remember what we were talking about. So, um, what was I going to say? See? Head. All, all of a kerfuffle now. So, today's show is called The Prassiolite Controversy. Um... Because last month, Sherry, when I brought up the Prasiolite, has mentioned that she heard it called Green Amethyst. And this sparked something going off in my head. So I went off into the wilderness of the mystery of stones and crystals to bring back some more information about Prasiolite. And I learned stuff that I didn't know. So I'm going to share that with you. And this core, again, why I called it the Prasiolite controversy, because there's some more controversial stuff going on out there that I didn't know about, but now I do. So I'm going to share it with you. So first things first, the general consensus that I have been able to discern from my searches and research, which is pretty much the same thing. But anyway, so, um, Prasiolite is prasiolite, and amethyst is amethyst. Amethyst, the word, the crystal, and the colour are one thing. There is no green amethyst. However, and let me bring up a couple of examples just to refresh everybody's memory. There we have a piece of amethyst. 
And here we have a piece of citrine. So, however, um, and this was from a show uh, a bit of a while back. The piece of citrine on your screen now used to be amethyst and it was heat treated to turn it into citrine, which because citrine, natural citrine is quite rare and amethyst is quite plentiful, heating it up basically changed its color and, the, and the, its energy vibration to citrine. So, and just again to refresh everybody's memories, the discussions that I have had and my own intuition and everything, we can treat heat treated amethyst as citrine. So I'm happy with that. Work with it the same way. The color is of citrine, although generally a bit darker than natural. Its energy and its, its, its the color vibration, its energy vibration is, is now citrine. So treat it as citrine. There we go. Everybody's happy, but just know what you're buying. So now then, let's get rid of those, uh, or at least that one. How do I do that? I've forgotten. It's around here somewhere. Um, ah, that's what I do. I remember now. Bye bye to Citrine. So, and um, we'll just drop that amethyst out as well. So, last month, off the subject, but how's your mum doing? She's doing remarkably well. She's having a bit of a tired day uh, because it's quite hot in the front room. You know, now the winter's here, we've turned the heating on, but we've got a bright, sunshiny day. So the sun's beaming through the window and the rooms are really warm. So she's just having having a nap time. But she's doing okay. Thank you very much for asking. Um, so last month, um, I'll bring up this piece. This is a piece of prasiolite that I have picked up in the states in august i showed you a big pile of it with the light shining through but this is i don't know slightly better picture but it's fine so prasiolite is a green quartz now the reason it's been called green amethyst from time to time is because of this next one which i'm going to bring up like this now that is also prasiolite i as i say i went off hunting and i picked some of this up it's prasiolite but you can definitely see this used to be heat this used to be ameth um chevron amethyst you can clearly see the chevrons in it because what I found out is that some prasiolite is also heat treated amethyst. Now I thought you heat treat amethyst, you get citrine, but also you can get the, the green of prasiolite, although this is. Um, you know, denser, more opaque. So, um, we're getting into the realms of madness and chaos now when people are changing things because they can. I don't really feel the need for it. And I don't know the reason why they do it. Simply the same reason why they heat treat amethyst for citrine is because it's financially viable to do so there isn't much natural prasiolite there isn't much natural citrine so heat treating amethyst oh we've got a nice plentiful supply now so 
again, and this from my own meditations and my own thoughts, how do I deal with this? How do I rectify um, or what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, do you know what I mean? How do I re re rectify the chaos that's going on in my head that is saying all these things are man-made? Well, I'm doing the same thing as I did with the citrine. I'm treating it as it would be because the color change which is part one of the most important areas when we're kind of dealing with man-made or um, artificially enhanced stones is to say how do i feel about it can i accept the fact that this used to be a different stone well, it's not a different stone, it's the same stone, it's just been adjusted. There's nothing I can do about the actual method or the fact that it's been done. It's been done. So I can now take this stone because it's attracted me, it's called to me, so I've taken it. Give it some love, give it some healing, because, you know, artificially doing stuff isn't pleasant for them, even though, you know, well, it's unnecessary, really, isn't it? So I think I'm starting to wander a bit. But when, so I'm treating it the same. I'm treating this, this one the same as this one. Now this to me is natural prasiolite. It uh, has a has the feeling of it. It has a different, completely different look. So for me, this is natural. This one's artificial or artificially um, enhanced. And, but I'm going to treat them the same, the same as if they were natural. It's not their fault that, you know, we've been messing about. So, um, there we go. That's where the controversy now lies. Is it real? Is it natural? Is it artificially enhanced? Like the citrine amethyst controversy if you're not happy don't buy the stone it's as simple as that if you're happy to work with them work with them and treat them in the same way that's all, the only thing you can do so there you go how does that sound to everybody now let's just come bring those down and let's have a look at some uh, comments. So that's Sherry's. That's the one Sherry was talking about, the, um, the Chevron version. So thank you for bringing that in, Sherry, because... It helped me discover some information that I didn't know. And, and, you know, I don't consider myself the font of all knowledge. I know, know everything about everything. We're all here to learn. So it's great that you brought that up it's awesome thank you sherry thank you very much and sherry as
I've mentioned on a number of occasions, and as I hope you will all soon discover, if you haven't already, um, she owns Evolve in Glen Arbor. If you're in Glen Arbor, pop into her store because it's awesome. It's one of my three stone suppliers in the world. There's only three places I go to now, just three. There's a couple of people over here and Sherry's place is amazing. She has some of the magnificent stuff and please don't sell it all before I get back. I'm just asking please. Um, anyway, so that's Sherry. So hi, Sherry from everybody. Um, now, where are my rest of the comments? Uh, Jane, let's see. I'm going to bring Jane's up. Uh, if you, uh, if you, I agree, if you accept stone, it's because it's vibrational and speaks to you. Almost all stones are altered in some way before coming to the marketplace, even if it's just in cutting. If the stone is going to work with you, it will. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100% guarant 100% agree with Jane there. Um, the One of the areas that I've come from is to hopefully give you the information that you need to make the informed choice like with citrine natural or heat treated you should be aware that it ha both happens and that a reputable supplier will tell you that it has been heat treated or otherwise so yes but every stone that comes out of the ground has had a something done to it like jane says if it's been cut or if it's been polished you know um so we're, we we have messed about with it i admit but the i don't know i i kind of just like things to be what they're supposed to be without too much interference from us so that ladies and gentlemen is the controversy of a prasiolite so off you go i know you will want some i'm going to bring this one back up uh where are we so i'm going to bring her back up because I does I know I spoke about it last week month. See, I don't even know what where I'm up to. I know I spoke about it last month, but just to remind everybody, it's a transformative crystal. It's got transformative energies, um, spiritually and emotionally. You know, with with the color of it is so it's going to be connected in one way or another to the heart chakra. Um, and uh, for example, if you place it on the earth chakra, feet, your connection, your connection with the earth, it can help draw in that earth energy to the heart chakra, you know, giving that grounding so that, you know, the emotional chaos that we, all sometimes go through can be grounded in some way if you place it on the thymus the high heart chakra then it can you know help draw in those higher frequencies in the the, the, the crystal itself can act as a bridge between the earth frequencies and the astral the higher frequencies and bring them connect them together within yourself and when you meditate with that with that energy 
you can embody that and embody on the earth plane the higher spiritual energy and bring it here and you can you can then i don't know transmit that transmit is the wrong word but bring it into everyday life and not just for yourself but if you're you're you've got that within you then it can attract that energy not just to you but to those around you to the earth you know uh, it's, it's a fabulous fabulous thing fabulous fabulous thing but i say that about every single stone in the world don't i anyway sherry also mentioned last month that she liked seeing them up close to the camera if i can find it there you go there she is that's the one in the picture there you go how's that um right now she's just made a comment uh from a feng shui perspective we would use the simulated stone as metal as it has been manipulated by a human much like we use stones or crystals that have been carved into symbols or shapes ah interesting see i know nothing about feng shui absolutely nothing at all so that is going to be something i am going to have to look into thank you nashi thank you very much um so what's next we've dealt with the controversy we've dealt with the sound issues so i thought i'd seen as we were on the green green quartz or green quartzes Air, you know what I mean. I've got a couple more for you to see. So I'm going to bring up this one. And we're going to make her all big on the screen. It looks big, but it's not. These are tiny, fairly tiny. Well, you know, maybe about an inch and a bit long. And a, what? an eighth eighth wide yeah anyway they're, they're quite small crystals these it is quartz these come from this is called seraphos quartz or prasem 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 quartz and I'm, I'm i'm bringing this one because there's a there's a connection with the pras of prasem and prasiolite there's you know it's just a, a, a connection that I, I made. Nobody's mentioned it to you, but it kind of marries the two together. Anyway, this Seraphos quartz is only found on the Greek island of Seraphos, hence the name, which I'm pretty sure you already figured out. So I'm sorry if I'm, you know, babbling on. Um, so uh, what am I doing? I'm doing that. So Seraphos quartz, it is only found on the Greek island of Seraphos and nobody's allowed to collect any more from the island. The mineral collection on the island is banned now. So the only examples that are floating around in the world are now what is there, what's already been collected. So um, what we have is just going to move around basically, you know, unless it comes to me, which is I'm going to keep it. I'm, you know, I can't help myself. You know what I'm like. Um, anyway, this stuff forms, I'm looking at it now. Look, it's here. There, there we go. Teeny tiny. And you don't get large crystals of this because this forms within cavities in mar in the marble that you find all around. Uh, that's where it forms. I had, uh, I can't remember and I can't even pronounce 
the the mineral inclusion within it that gives it its both its color and the energy um but it has got there is another oh no that's a different one i think no no this what that was this one oh never mind forget that bit just ignore some of what i'm talking about because you know you know what i'm like i lose um oh i've got more comments let me just look let me just look because I don't know what I do, but the, the comments are supposed to scroll down, but sometimes they don't. Um, what is it called? Glen Arbor, yes. Sherry's, Sherry's store is called Evolve. She's got a Facebook page thingy. Um, go and have a look. Awesome place. Um, do, do, do. Oh. Bought a Larimar bracelet yesterday, beautiful, I love the colour. Yes, Larimar, very special stone. Again, that only occurs on one island, but I can't remember which one it is off the top of my head. Um, uh, I like your re re the, the explanation resolution on this. Thank you, Nelly. Well, it's my pleasure, uh, Sherry. My pleasure indeed. Um, ah, now she's put up the link to Sherry's store. Uh Rob, be careful in Glen Arbor not to wait the sleeping bears. Yes, no, because they might eat you. Um, but, you know, they're just doing what bears do. But then bears generally don't eat people. Just leave the bears alone. I love bears. Um, what did Jane say? Um, this is great if I'm knowing which is naturally occurring or transmuted is good for yeah exactly well it's my pleasure jane my pleasure um ah right is the st stone more blue or green on my screen it looks light blue yeah it's uh the color rendition on that is pretty poor apologies it's green it's green proper green there you go there you go that's the natural lighty, more natural, not photographed one. There you go. I can't hold it in the camera. There you go. So definitely green, definitely. Um, now more comments. Hey Nelly, please check out my question above. Would really like to know which was the question above. Uh, uh what was the name of the greek island crystal seriphos i'll try and put that up hang on let me just try this uh s e r i p h o s There you go, Seriphos. Um, that's that. That's the this baby. Woo. Um, so yeah. Anyway, this one. Now, uh, what am I thinking? So again, green connects to the heart chakra. Now it can open the heart chakra stabilize it you know help you uh what's the word i'm looking for assimilate all that you know when you're getting all that emotional bombardment and everything's going a bit crazy this can help stabilize your emotional side help open that chakra so you're not closing it off just to uh, i can't cope with all this um keeps it open but keeps it stabilized keeps it protected so that you can work your way through any of the emotional chaos that is going on around you it can help release and remove any negative energy associated with that as well so there you go just a little bit on serifos quartz so um mine no it's mine sherry um ah i asked if you buy your stones or can we still find them 
Right. Some stones and crystals, you can only, you can, some have to be mined. That's the only way to get down to them. Others you can find. Um, now, I've got some, I didn't, this is a good discussion, actually, which I might continue next month. That's getting heavy. Sorry. Um, about whether or not bought stones or found stones, it, which is best. My opinion is it doesn't matter. Um, some stones you will only ever find in a store because the the location of where they naturally occur, um, like this one. Some stones you can find walking about wherever you may be. Quartz is very plentiful. It's probably the most plent walk along a beach you're walking on you're basically walking on quartz you know it's just ground up very tiny we call it sand and it's mixed in with lots of other things but there's lots and lots of quartz in there so whether you're in a store or whether you're outside in the world in the forest on the beach um walking through a field if there's a stone there that calls to you, then that's what you do. You pick them up. Um, one thing, and I can see you may put another message down there, and I'm going to come back to that one. My thoughts are, if it called if you're outside then you should really ask permission from the spirits of the land of the where you are that it's okay for it to come home and you know visit for it to come home and live with you whatever if you get a yes you're good to go if you get a no then you leave it alone um, you can ask the stone whether it wants to come home with you you know ask permission if you're in a store get your wallet out and go and buy it it's as simple as that um now this is another important one i love picking up stones but rarely know what they are it can be difficult when we don't have a huge amount of experience of geology as to knowing exactly what we've got in our hand when we're outside the in the store the research has been done it's been sold and sold and so on and so forth and the information carries along with it so we kind of generally know what we've getting um, if you're outside and you don't know what it is is that quite so important as to what I mean is, it's not always necessary to know exactly what something is to work with it because we should always be working in the, with the stones in the way that we're supposed to. Now, the information that I give you may not resonate with you. So, meditate with the stone itself. Let it tell you how it wants to work with you. I work with stones. Some stones I work with in the way that the books and literature suggests. Some I don't because they told me differently. They told me differently. They, they work with me in a different way. So it's not 100% necessary as long as you talk to the stones they will communicate with you on how you're supposed to work with them anyway 
so don't worry about it if you want to research it research it knowledge is a good thing and if you research it and find knowledge then share that knowledge because i don't have it all in here it's not all in here some of it's in here and some of it isn't because i haven't learned it yet so find out share everybody learns and that's a good thing um and you're welcome so what other th uh, no, messages uh, la 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 yeah dominion the the, 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 the larimar larimar dominican republic becomes off the off the off an island off the coast of the dominican republic and i believe it's a blue form of petrolite if i pronounce that correctly there's red and blue larry mar being the blue um anyway what's next i've got another one uh that's that bit so uh next is next yeah and just bring that one up with respect stones will share their secrets yes but as we got respect we have to respect them as living entities and you know i've mentioned it before about programming crystals that's really really horrible don't program a crystal ever never ever 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 we never program crystals. i never program crystals all the literature tells you to program crystals to set your intent and blah 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 nonsense nonsense i've never done that in my life the first moment i picked up a stone i never tried to program it i spoke to it i talked to it um programming is just feels wrong it feels rude you know we're all here to work together to you know walk our paths in the best way that we can and all our stone and crystal friends will help us as much as they can if we work them with them in a respectful way so yeah uh like hang on like programming a computer have you ever met a programmer uh i've met people that do computery stuff that program things i don't know how it works it's I don't know sorcery of a level that i don't understand um but yeah i mean i can see where the idea of programming comes from you know we've got all this stuff inside a computer and we make things make it work but it's just i don't know it's not right programming is not right talking to them asking for their assistance, explaining what you want to achieve. If it's right for you to achieve said goal, there's every likelihood that it will. If it's wrong or not, um, oh, what's the word? If it's detrimental in some way, whether early or later on, then you'll pretty quickly learn that it, you weren't supposed to achieve that goal anyway so it's all about talking it's all about being open open to change open to not getting what you want but getting what you need i think that makes sense i understand it anyway so i'm going to bring on another green stone i mentioned this last month however i didn't have an example for you i'm just going to bring up nashi's comment there uh about co-creation and co-operation harmony rather than manipulation superiority perfect yeah you said it far far better than i was doing um yeah that's exactly what i was trying to say only better thank you neshi anyway 
I'm going to now introduce you to the Oro Verdi quartz that I went out and hunted for an example of because I mentioned it last month. Cedars were, you know, talking a lot about greenstones. Get my wire out of the way. Um, so, in a similar way to this baby, the Oro Verde has been enhanced but not with heat oh what have i just done i just pressed a button by mistake there we go and there we go not with heat but in a hulk fashion with gamma rays bombarded with gamma rays it gives it its green color now okay so it's been bombarded with gamma rays but it's not overly radioactive otherwise i wouldn't have it in my house and let's just bring her up there she is so quartz but irradiated uh Hang on, let me just, I will write it in the comment. I can't, I keep forgetting to do this. Um, o -U -R -O -V -E -R -E. O-U-R-V-E-R-D-E. I think that's it. Oro Verde. I've got an itch, sorry. Or Verdi. So, not a particularly expensive item to get hold of. Um, sorry, I was just looking at it. Um, because it's basically just quartz that's been irradiated. <sighs> so, again, slightly problematic in the way it's been manipulated the way it's been enhanced it seems like we are constantly trying to make things better improve things you know things don't need not the natural world doesn't need improving he's been doing it for well forever um so you know we don't need we we don't know better than nature we don't know better than the great mother she knows everything and she knows what's best so we don't really need to do this but again it's been done so what am i going to do about it well i'm going to treat the stone with as much respect and love as i can I'm going to look after it with all the others. And although I've not worked with this one personally yet, um, I'm going to. So I'm going to give you the information that I've gleaned or uh, that much information that I've gleaned from some of the literature. Um, and then I'm going to work on it myself. So, um, ah, let me just bring that one up. When they enhance them, is that what makes them smooth? No, they become smooth when they're tumbled or polished. That's just polishing. If this hadn't been polished, it would be rough like everything else is before um i know I, I don't have a problem with tumbles or polishing <sighs> because mother nature's been doing that forever herself so i i can accept that they do i find tumbled and um polished what was I saying then? Anyway, uh, let me let me just rewind. I'm 
happy to work with tumbled, polished, and rough. I love them all equally. When they're polished, um, they do reveal more of the inner nature of the crystal than a than a rough one does. So that can help us work with it in certain ways. Um, yeah, that's it, Rob. The sea does it just takes longer. So do rivers. Um, Elise prefers rough. It's personal choice. I love them all. Um, ah, interesting, Rob. There's a reason programmers aren't in charge. Okay. <sighs> yeah, um, I don't know really, Rob. It's a computery thing. I can barely do this. And, you know, computers don't. They confuse me. I admit it freely. I, I computers conf confuse me, and I am really, really basic with <laughs> when I'm working on them. Um, but yeah, you might be right. Perhaps Rob, you could post in the in the on the on the, on the on the on the Facebook pagey thing something more about this because I'd be interested to learn more about what you're saying so please please do that please rob please okay uh ba -ba -ba -ba. right so back to the court so <sighs> the literature tells us that it reveals a deeper meaning to life or the deeper meaning to life um it can help us look at our lives and the possible future events that we may experience. And it's got to be possible or potential because, you know, every decision we make changes the future. But it can let us look at those events with the eyes of or through the lies lens of the past, what we've already lived through, that we can maybe make wiser choices than we would have done otherwise. More constructive choices, maybe. But as I said, I haven't l worked with this But I will, and I'll get back to you on it when I've got more for you. Um, and here's what Rob's just said about popular confusion surrounding computers. Yeah. Um, it keeps him employed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I kind of like just... This is why I haven't got any hair. They, they made me tear it out. Literally. Okay. Long article with background explanation, but I will. Well, I hope you will, Rob. I'm, I do. I will look forward to reading that. So please share your insights. I, I really, really hope you will. Uh, so what am I doing now? Uh, I'm going to bring this up from Neshi. Uh, the computer has quartz crystals inside, yes. So programmers write code that the computer hard drive will read and do commands of the program. Kind of like would program a crystal work for us? For those programming their crystals. Sounds like Atlantean energy, doesn't it? Yes, exactly. Exactly. The, the short version, you have to think like a machine. Yeah, I can't. I can't, Rob. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> anyway, so let's all await Rob's article and uh, let us read with interest because 
it, I mean, it, it's kind of an important point, you know, a modern industrial computerized world is a strange, strange beast and far removed from, from what, what our ancestors knew of the trees and the land and the sky and the waters, you know. And that's where I feel comfortable with the land and the sky and the waters and the trees. So, you know, I'm just, I think we've got a, another show in there somewhere. I'm going to work on it. Anyway, so let me just drop this down because as Rob's in the house, I wanted to... bring in something that both Rob and I have done recently. Yes, Rob, agreed. Agreed. Everybody can really see that. Rob, maybe put it in Star Nations. Definitely. Write something, Rob. Write it. Um, anyway, babbling, what, babbling again. Rob and I um, were both lucky enough to test out a course that is now live, um, a course created by Philip Cargom, um, chosen chief of the Druid order that I am, I belong to, the uh, order of bards, ovates and druids. I'm gonna solo that. He wrote a book called Lessons in Magic a little while ago and he has created a course about it um it's a, a, an online course thing and it's i did it and rob rob was part of it too and i have to say it was fascinating uh, this is why I'm bringing it to you, you know, just in case somebody out there might also benefit from it. And it's not an overly, you know, it's really reasonable price wise and everything. So, but I just want you to bring it to everybody's attention because I was really quite taken with it. Anyway, so I, I, there's a, I'll, I'll put a linky thing up on the on the on the on the page um i know i'm running out of time and i might go over sorry if i do but you know i think i did last month as well anyway um there we go that was the the thing um, anyway, uh, so, sorry, uh, Sherry's brought up a, a, a comment as well that I want to bring up in a sec about the Oro Verdi. Um, uh, but, but, thank you, Nershi. Um, oh, what am I talking about? Anyway, this course. So he created this course. Now, when you talk about magic lessons, and I know we did a, a show on it, a while back. Sorry, I've got an itch. I know we did a show on it a while back. And this kind of, it, it's saying everything more, much of what I was saying, only saying it more, taking it deeper and far more eloquently than I did. Anyway, so um, I just wanted to recommend it to everybody because it's amazing and it really gave me some insights and revelations that I really didn't expect. It's fabulous, a really wonderful course. But rather than be one of those, like, a, I mean, the book and the course go hand in hand, but the unlike you go into a store and you find a book on magic, you know, um, and inside there's all sorts of spells and this and that and everything else and mix this and blah, 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 blah. It's not 
one of those. This one, this course and the book gets right into the real deep heart and root of magic. That it's before you prepare your your magical work, you have to prepare yourself. And this is the first time that I have seen a book or a course actually truly get into that area. And like I said, it brought to light things that I hadn't thought about. I hadn't considered not just about magic, but about myself. So I just wanted to recommend that to everybody. Um, I've got a linky thing uh, that I can put up here, um, but I will put it on the um, the Facebooky page thing. I will do that later. So it's there for anybody that may find interest of it. And there's a big introduction. Um, it's great, Jane, honestly. It's really good. Um, anyway, so there you go. Lessons in magic. I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. Now, I just want to bring up back this because Sherry made a mention it uh, uh but, uh, but uh, there is there she is uh the many faces i see in the stone suggest to me that stones can choose different journeys as we do perhaps in different colors forms of energy and sometimes we help them just do that very interesting i'm going to copy that because those are kind of some of the thoughts that I had but not in that way and that says it I love that I love that Sherry actually Sherry you should write that down and put it on a little thing in your store because that that is just yeah I love that thank you Sherry I'm going to copy that um, and just bring back Rob's. If it's legitimate, it's not going to give you little spells to play with. Quoting someone in a position to speak authoritatively on the subject. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Exactly, Rob. So, you know, Rob's experienced it. I've experienced it. It's a great thing. A great, great thing. So, uh, does anybody have any other questions? Have I been rattling along long enough do you think uh so like three show topics there yeah so remind me what they are later Nashi, because i might forget because i've written them down and i need to write them down i'm not listening back to this because i can't bear to listen to the sound of my own voice it just sounds flat and slightly slightly nasally after you know on the tinter web on the or, or whatever you know what i mean um this is why i'm not a singer <laughs> um anyway so there's thank you nashi and i am going to sign off for now i will see you next month and yeah I will think about the things that we've said and, you know, oh, there's lots to talk about. There's always lots to talk about. So have a great and glorious rest of the day. Thank you, Sherry. I'm glad you're, I'm glad everybody's here. Glad everybody has joined me today. It's been really, really wonderful. Thank you all for um, joining me. I thank you for your, all your comments, even though I get a bit um, mixed up and have technical issues. And yes, I will see you next month, Jane. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, next month is our winter gathering. And this year, I get to go. Yay! 
yay for me i'm going it's going to be awesome so um right. okay well take care of yourself rob jane and neshi and sherry and elise and robin and anybody else that i haven't mentioned have a glorious glorious day have fun and i will see you again soon bye everybody see you all next month